just don't understand how the situation got so out of hand. Thousands killed, even women and children, and they blame me for everything. History will not be kind to my memory. Margo, so good to see you. How's married life treating you these days? Greetings, Queen Mother. I'm a bit tired after all the celebrating from the marriage, but I suppose that I'll recover soon. I might get used to Henry, even though it was an arranged marriage. He seems to like some of the same things that I like, and he's fun to talk to. Well, you know, Margo, this union was designed to make peace between the Catholics and the Huguenots, as well as make you Queen of Navarre upon Henry's mother's death. Have you noticed? I finally finished the gallery of all my favorite pictures. I've put the paintings of me and your father on either side of the fireplace. I still remember the day we were married. We were only 14, did you know? And your father wasn't expected to be king. If his brother Francis III hadn't gotten sick and died, he wouldn't have ascended the throne of France. Don't you think the one of Diane is great? I think she looks much better with a mustache. I miss your father so much. I would love to capture that de Montgomery. He is not only a rebel Protestant, but secretly I'd like to pay him back for hitting Henry in the eye at that joust. Your father might still be with us if that had not happened. Here are those pictures of you and your brothers and sisters. I am so proud I was able to bear so many children, even though only the seven of you survived. It was touch and go for the first ten years when it seemed I couldn't conceive a child. I thought Henry might cast me aside because I couldn't bear him a son. And when Francis finally arrived, he was to be the first of ten. You know how I love maps of any kind. So I have my favorites here. And, of course, works of my favorite painters. You know, Margot, that your recent marriage to Henry Navarre was the right thing to do. Even if some of the more radical Catholics are upset over it. In the end, they will come to see that I was right. You know, Queen Mother, I am so sick of these wars of religion going on and on. I wish we could be at peace so I could concentrate on dances and masks and having a wonderful time in my beautiful dresses and jewels. 
Yes, yes. Of course, I completely understand. Yes, please, please, come on. Can you come in? Yes, come in. Queen Mother, it seems the King's Messenger is here. Yes, ma'am. Where is it? State your business quickly, please. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Grace. I've come at the behest of the King. He wishes to see you in his office immediately. Oh, all right, I wonder what the problem is now. Um, I'm going to finish my breakfast, and then you can tell him I'll be there straight away. All right. Well, I guess that means I should leave. It was nice to speak with you again, Queen Mother, and I'm sure I will see you soon. Very well. Good day to you, Your Grace. Charles, what is it that is so urgent that you need to interrupt my breakfast to speak with me about? Ah, oh, my lord, I'm afraid I have bad news. The attempted assassination of Colini has failed. People are blaming us. He has only been injured in his arm, and he may have survived if infection does not set it. <coughs> set it. Goodness. We must go to see him at once, so that it does not appear we are involved in the attempt. We must tell him we will punish the culprits. Colini's brother has at least 4,000 troops outside the city gates, and if he were to think we were involved, he might attack. <coughs> yes, yes, I know. I had so hoped that, that the peace of Saint-Germain would finish these past years of civil war, but perhaps it is not to be, while people like Colini still ha lead the Huguenot. The Duke of Guise will not listen to reason, and will never accept the Huguenots as long as people like Colini still lead them. I see that now. <coughs> Ready? We will take the shortcut through the village. You should stay outside Colini's room while I go in. I know how much you really love him and maybe you should not see him in his current state.
my dear Admiral. What happened? How do you feel? Are you safe here? Oh, uh, <coughs> Ow. They... The assassins... They... They got me in my arm. Took off part of my finger. Admiral, I promise you here and now, I will find the culprits who perpetrated this cowardly act and bring them to justice. Take care of yourself now. The reports were right. He is in a lot of pain, but it looks like he might survive. Let's go back to the house and make our plans. Alright. Whatever you think is best, Mother. I hope he is not in too much pain. We need to make sure he dies. Colini must not be allowed to continue to flaunt the terms of the treaty. We need to order the assassination of him and the top Yugano leaders. As long as they are alive, we will never see peace between Protestants and Catholics. I think you are much too close to him, darling. I thought that when you signed the Peace of Saint-Germain and Mar Margot was married to Navarre, we would finally see peace. But these Protestants are never happy. Maybe, if we get rid of the leaders, more reasonable men will step forward and will finally have the peace I've been working for all these years! Yes! <coughs> Kill them! Kill them all! Can you issue the order for me? I'm not feeling very well. I think I will go lie down. <coughs> Oh, of course. Yes. Please, darling, come lie down on my bed. You can gaze at the tapestries I had made to commemorate happy times in our lives as a family. Here is your sister Margot with her husband, Henry, together with your brother Francis. The other tapestry is a wonderful representation of the water festival at Bayonne where we met with the Habsburgs. Although, strictly speaking, those haven't been made yet. Please, just lie down and take a rest. I'll see to the arrangement for our Protestant friends. for me? Ah, Magistrate, we are in a potential crisis. I need you to make sure to shut all the city gates and make sure these citizens are armed. We are worried about uprisings within the city by the Protestants. Send word to the parish church to ring the bells between midnight and dawn. Thank you. You may go. On your way out, can you please ask the King's Guard to come in? Very well, I will do that immediately. Good evening, Your Grace. Good evening, I am here at your command, Your Highness. Yes, 
thank you for coming so quickly. Here, here is a list of Protestant leaders that must be eliminated tonight. The church bells will ring between midnight and dawn, and that will be the signal to begin. Take care to be as quiet as possible, and tell no one. As you wish, your highness. in the street, cutting down everyone suspected of being Protestant? I did not order this! I only gave them a few names! Just the leaders! But I hear that thousands of Protestants have been slaughtered! Women and children among them! This must be Guise's fault. He alone is heartless enough to allow this massacre. And I will be blamed. Thank God Navarre was spared! If he will stick by his promise to convert back to the one true church, then maybe we can appease Guy. At the same time, maybe Henry can bring the remaining Protestants around to honest their promises in the treaty. <coughs> Mother, I am so sorry. No one could have foretold the response of the militant Catholics. I actually liked Admiral Coligny. I did not wish to see him dead. But what is done is done, and we need to be strong for the people of France. And then Charles left this world less than two years later. He was not king during happy times. I think the massacres affected him more than he let on. His health started failing quickly afterwards. If only he could see my garden, the only place I can take solace from the tragedy that is my life. I am so glad I had it designed as a traditional Italian garden. My statue and fountain are probably the best in the city. My roses are doing wonderful and I have a peacock. Charles would have laughed at that. I suppose I am prone to collecting oddities. I do like to sit in the grotto and wonder what life would have been like if Henry II had not died so young and I would not have had to take over the entire affairs of the Kingdom of France. to get the cook to pick these strawberries. They are ripe, and I'm in the mood for something with lots of strawberries. I may be in France, but my food is still Italian. I think maybe I'll start out with a nice, rich soup. Then I'll have some pasta and roast beef. I'll get cooked to make some pastries with my strawberries, and I'll eat those first. I'll have a nice salad made of these vegetables here and wash it all down with some fine Italian wine. I'll finish up with some Italian cheese. I guess I'll have to check on the supply. I'm not sure how much I have left. I may be portly these days, but that won't stop me from enjoying one of the few things I still love. Food. <laughs> 